Hello everyone again. So um, welcome to this Snowflake uh, implementation course. So um, we will be looking at uh, we, we will be looking at the theoretical aspect of Snowflake as well as well as going through a lot of actual hands-on activities throughout this course. Uh, so the theoretical aspect is around architecture and um, how how it came about and why is it actually different from everything else. So understanding that architecture. Um, Will, will be necessary in actually uncovering and understanding many of those features that actually came about just because of their uh, the unique architecture that uh, Snowflake follows. So I know we have already gone through uh, at a high level what the what the course would look like, uh, but um, just taking another quick look and uh, looking at various subtopics that we will be covering uh, within these high level topics. So as I mentioned, Snowflake architecture will be going through the Snowflake architecture uh, in quite a bit of depth. Uh, not today, uh, but we will start in depth uh, in tomorrow's session where we'll look at, look at uh, the decoupled nature of the Snowflake architecture where the compute and the storage are actually decoupled from each other, which gives it um, a unique capability to expand independently and then that also brings about um, a lot of interesting um, use cases with itself. We'll be looking at uh, data loading. So um, at at the moment, um, the anticipated time when we start the data loading part will probably be the third day of the course where we'll jump into the data loading part um, and Pradeep will take you through this. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, Bulk data loading, data loading through Snow SQL, uh, data loading through, you know, going through all the concepts of external and internal stages. Uh, why do they matter? What, what, what are the differences between the two? Uh, looking at how we load um, uh, simple CSV data and how does actually Snowflake handle uh, unstructured data like Parquet, like JSON, uh, and, and similar other formats such as XML. Uh, well, not unstructured, but semi structured. Um, then we'll uh, look at time travel and cloning, two of the complementing features. So time travel allows you to go back in time uh, as how, how your data looked like before a query ran or before um, your, uh, b before a specific point in time as well. And connected to that is cloning. So you can actually make copies of your data, which is not a big feat, but when you look at how that is done in uh, Snowflake that it's it's actually quite exciting and quite powerful. Uh, we'll also be looking at performance tuning, um, so virtual warehouses, how to take advantage of, you know, multi-cluster virtual warehouses, um, what advantages, advantages do they bring, uh, the auto clustering that happens in um, Snowflake and whether we can actually change the clustering ourselves and, and the caching as well. Uh, so, the adaptive caching that exists in uh, Snowflake, what, what advantages does, does it bring and how to actually write your queries and uh, to get, uh, you, you know, design your uh, physical architecture to ensure that you take advantage of caching. Again, as I mentioned, um, secure data sharing, again, connected with the unique architecture. So there are three different ways you can share your data and it's uh, very, very different in how we used to share data previously. So without any movement of data, you can actually move that data around. Um, or you can actually share that data around. And then finally, uh, account and resource management. So keeping an eye on your costs. So you don't want uh, one thing, um, you know, despite all the advantages of uh, cloud, one thing that is a bit scary about cloud is, is the runaway cost. So if you leave something running, um, it it will consume a lot of uh, dollars, right? So you want to keep sure, make sure that you put some monitoring on to your uh, your cloud infrastructure so that it it hits a certain point and you are actually able to be alerted. So we will look at uh, all of those capabilities and security and access control as well. So obviously one of the uh, very crucial thing nowadays with all the different standards around there. So you want to make sure that your data is secured, uh, whoever is accessing is being, uh, you know, controlled in terms of their uh, the, the, their roles and everything. 